Well, here we are again. We are about halfway through our course, so we are going to talk about prayer today. Oftentimes, we separate our prayer life from our quiet time. Either you have a great time in the Word, or you have a great prayer life. But I think that it should be both. I know it's hard to seem, it might seem hard to balance both, but I really think that those two things go hand in hand and that you can really have them both. Prayer is our time of response to the Lord. It's when we share with God. It's when we talk back, not talk back in a negative way, but it is when we engage back with Him. Prayer is meant to be a constant conversation with God. Um, and I believe our prayer time with God is a vital part of our quiet time. And it's the time that we begin that day, that whole day conversation. So when we pray, we should start by praising Him. Praising Him for who He is. One thing I love to do is I love to start and just tell Him, God, you're amazing. You're beautiful. I go through the alphabet. You are Creator God. You are delightful. You are everlasting Father. You are good. You are honorable. You are immaculate. I love to go through the alphabet, and I just think of the characteristics of God through the alphabet. So I start with praising Him. Then I start with thanksgiving. Thank you, Lord, for my family. Thank you for this home. Thank you for the ministry that you have given me. Then I pray for the lost and those that are hurting. And then I confess my sins. And then I pray and ask God, to bless my day. That is kind of how my guided prayer time goes. So that is, that's just a small way that we can do our prayer time. There's many ways and there is no wrong way. Remember, Jesus taught the disciples how to pray. He said, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. That's kind of how I modeled my prayer time. But your prayer time is intimate. It's your time with God. Nobody tells you how to speak to your spouse or to your kids. So nobody tells you how to speak to God either. You could speak to Him however it, however is best for you. I love to use Psalm 119 verse 18 to start my quiet time. It says, Open my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of your law. And verse 17 right before it says, Deal bountifully with me your servant that I may live and keep your word. So maybe when my quiet time starts, I might start by praying, Lord, deal bountifully with me today. Help me to live according to your word. Open my eyes that I may behold wonderful things out of your word, things that I need to change, things that are things you want me to do. God, teach me from your word today. And I will use verse 17 and 18 as my prayer of my time, starting my time with God. Then I have my quiet time. And when I'm done, I have some more praying to do. There's always things that reading scripture teaches me. And I go back and I praise him and thank him for what he's taught me. I usually confess something that God convicted me of during that quiet time. And I ask him to guide me in doing whatever the new thing is that he's showed me that I should be doing. Then I just continue that same conversation throughout the day. So both the prayer time at the beginning and at the end both kind of look the same. The one at the beginning is often shorter but then the one at the end is often longer because I have more time. And then I don't have to be sitting still and I don't have to be quiet anymore. I can begin to pray those things while I'm washing the dishes or doing the laundry or homeschooling or working or any of the things I'm doing. I can be praying those prayers of thanksgiving and praise and all that thing. I can do that while I go throughout my day. I no longer have to sit and be very still to do that. Our prayer time should be ongoing and it shouldn't just revolve around food. I think that is the hardest things for Christians. We pray when somebody's sick, when somebody's hurting, or when it's time to eat. And our prayer time should be so much more than that. I hope that you see that through, through our time here today, that it's supposed to be deep. It's supposed to be meaningful. My friend Rosalind over at A Little R&R, &R, her blog is rosalindjunique.com, and I'm going to link to that at the bottom. She does wonderful prayer challenges, and she is going to be doing a prayer course and a prayer Bible study, and so I'm going to link to her because she has an amazing prayer life. That woman prays for me, and I know things happen. So I am not going to go into a lot of details on prayer because I think she does it so much better. So I am going to link to some posts and some resources below this video today that I think are awesome on prayer. But just know this, prayer is your constant conversation with the Lord. It is you talking to Him, and you can't go wrong in talking to your Father because He loves you so much. So today, for our homework, 
I know that was really quick, but we got right to our homework. We are going to look specifically at Psalm 119, verses 17 through 24. I would like you to do a couple things. One, to use it as your daily quiet time, as we did, like we did yesterday. And two, I would like you to rewrite verses 17 and 18 as your prayer back to God. I showed you how I would do it, um, but I'll show you in a picture below or in a um, little snippet below the video. But just rewrite your prayer back to God and use those verses to do that. So I hope that this was helpful, and tomorrow we are going to be talking about accountability and how accountability is a big part of our quiet time, maybe the part that most people are missing. So in the meantime, remember to worship God with your life.